Let's start. <laughs> hey Greens, today we have a mystery box full of art and craft supplies. I have no idea what's in there because this box was sent to me by Joanne. Last time I checked, we don't have a Joanne here in Canada, but I think they do ship to you. Anyways, I'm not one to refuse things from a craft store because I'm very weak to craft and art supplies. It's bad. Don't look in my closet. Way too many art and craft supplies I don't need or may need. By the way, I did want to mention that this video is not sponsored by Joanne, just to be clear. What place do you know where you live that has art and craft supplies that you love to check out? Before Michael's came in, which is the biggest craft store here in Montreal where I am now, our local craft store was called Omer Dessert, and yeah, their, their prices were really expensive. Luckily, competition works in our favor. But I'm really curious to know what's your favorite where you live. In Japan, my favorite is actually Dekaido or Daiso. Let's see what's in this mystery box because I am super excited to check it out and if possible, let's do something with as many of the items in there. I'm really excited because I have no idea what's in there. By the way, if you like weird, mysterious things, make sure you subscribe because I do all the weird, mysterious things. Everything from unpackaging mystery blind bags, yeah, a hundred of them, all the way to doing a tattoo for the first time. So click on all notifications while you're there. All right, so let's see what's inside. Okay. Okay, okay. Ooh. Okay. A personalized note? Handwritten? I have goosebumps. Thank you. I feel, I feel like they see me. <laughs> in all honesty, these things would not be possible unless it was because of you grains. Well, I should say thanks to you grains because who would notice me? Surely not many people, but because you grains are so amazing. It's, kind of like, it's turned into... <laughs> I'm salty crafter. I'm sweetie crafter. I'm salty. No, I'm sweet. Okay, we get an impression of something spooky. Eh. Why does it smell nice in here? <laughs> smells nice. Oh, smells like pumpkin. Mm. Okay, you know what? Right, I want to check out what's written here. All right, so this is an absolutely sweet note from Joanne. I honestly can't believe that Joanne knows that I exist. Michaels, your turn to make a move. I'm just saying, Joanne obviously is giving me attention. We might go out on a few dates. And hey, if you don't come up with a bouquet of flowers somehow, no dating. We gotta get to know each other first, but Joanne's doing the first move. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> and they do specifically say that they're looking forward to my next creation. So let's go ahead and see. One of my biggest worries, I know this is gonna come off as self entitled I'm not, I'm just saying. Sometimes these packages are just a bunch of things thrown in there for creators. I'm curious if there's things I usually work with, because then that would mean this package is a 10 on 10 if they've seen things that I've worked on. Hang on, this, this box is annoying. You know what? I'm just gonna cut this. It's hiding my lighting. No, I actually kind of like this box. I could just do this. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. No, wrong way. Wrong way. I should have turned it the other way. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. All right, so now we are ready to open this. I feel like we can even use a ribbon like this. It really depends what's in here. We gonna keep it. Okay, and oh my god, is that clay? Holy car. Okay, okay. What's this big bo Okay, I have goosebumps everywhere. Joanne. Okay, I'm gonna put everything aside and I'm only going to discover it with you grains because this box is pretty big. We're gonna move it. And I wonder if this is a service that they do offer. Let's say, for example, you go on their website and they're like, check three of your favorite hobbies and then they make a mystery box. That would be a cool idea. So the first thing we get is a set of variety brushes. I can never have enough brushes, even to the point where you grains are sending me brushes because you're like, your brush kind of looks like it's, um, it's tired. Put it to retirement, Jackie. And I'm like, okay, I get the message. <laughs> so that is neat. Next is something I am extremely familiar with, which is the dual-ended tools from Sculpey. This was also included in my craft kit because I love these tools so much. Again, I can never have enough of these tools. And then, oh, Artsmith. So is Artsmith the brand name for Joanne? I'd be curious to know. For those of you who know them, let me know in the comment section below. So we have a set of acrylic paints. I am a huge fan of oil painting. I haven't done oil painting in a long time, but oil paints are my number one to go when I have free time. What is free time? <laughs> I know I'm sounding dramatic. I don't know what free time is, but yeah, when I have it, it's uh, oil painting. So we're going to be checking those out. I don't know what they have in store for me, but we have a limited edition 
scissor here, titanium nonstick. They're giving me more sharp pointy things, so I feel like they have an idea what they want me to do, but there is something that's wrapped. Oh my god, that is heavy. Oh, that is heavy. I have no idea what this is. We'll get to What is that? I don't want to look. I kind of want to look. Okay, let's, no, let's not take out the big box. Let's not take out the big box. So we have two types of Sculpey Primo. So this is a little bit more firm in terms of the actual texture of the clay itself, but it should also be a lot more durable. So we have a bit of a sparkly black, which is very reminiscent of the night sky, and just a pure black. And this one is called Twinkle Twinkle, which I really love the name. So here we go for that one. I'm really, really curious. Ooh. Okay, so I see mini easels over here. We have four, four of them. I'm actually starting to think that Art Smith is the brand name for Joanne. And we get six mini canvases. Again, Art Smith. So I think at this point I'm about 90% sure. All right, now let's check out what this heavy super wrapped. I mean, this is super wrapped. Look, so we ain't joking here. We ain't gonna remove, maybe we could remove, no, no, we're just gonna go through it. Is this the thing that smells good? What are you? Maybe they just spritz the entire box and they're like, we got her. We know she likes to sniff things. What is that? Is that a candle? I don't know. I appreciate the time it took to wrap all this. Scented candle. I knew something smelled good. So we have something called First Frost. What is it? It's like a scent of like vanilla, but like a pumpkin spice and a freshness to it. This is really nice. I'm gonna be lighting this up for sure. And then last but not least, this box. What are you? All right, so we have a Halloween decor. So it looks like some kind of cobweb. Let's go ahead and pull it out. Oh, all right, let me put some batteries in. All right, so I'm going to be turning this on right away. If you have any kind of sensitivities to light, I'll let you know to what timestamp you can jump to. All right, and this is the first one. You know what? I think we need the lights off. All right, so this is the first setting, which goes from a slow strobe to a faster strobe. I'm not going to show too much of the faster strobe, but it's kind of cool. Next we have, oh my god, yeah, that is quite the strobe light. And then we have flashing. Next. Oh, I like that. I really like lights that go in and out, like fade in and fade out. That is a really slow fade. Look at that. Oh no, I don't like that. <laughs> And then again, we have another fade in and fade out. This one's a little faster. Oh my God, that's too much. And then, I, yeah, this one doesn't move or does it? Can't tell. I think it just stays. And that's the last one. All right, so basically here's everything that we got. Let me know in the comment section below what would have been your first idea as a project that popped into your mind once seeing everything. Because for me, the first thing that came to my mind is comic book type art. In no way am I the inventor of this. I just absolutely love seeing artists when they use black and white type background and then paint on a colorful front. And because I seem to gravitate towards Pokemon, just like the pyramids that I made, we're going to use pages from the Pokemon manga. Now I don't know if these are real because some of them are in different languages. Others seem like they might be spoofs. Like this one, for example. What is that? I don't know what's going on with these Pokemon faces, but they're delicious looking. <laughs> it's almost like all of them are salty crafters pets for some weird reason. Yeah, I know Salty, just go away. I know these are your pets, just shoot. And instead of painting the entire Pokemon, this could be a project that you can do more easily, is we're going to be using the silhouettes and we're going to be doing it with resin and glitter. Oh my God, why did I just get myself into it? We're doing all six. On this channel, it's all or nothing. <clears throat> so for obvious reasons, I will be supplementing the gaps with my own stuff. I also want to find out if I can break these because I have other plans. I'm not gonna use them as they are. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, I have different plans for these. Let's see if you can get into my brain. So by no means is this the professional way to do it. This is just the Jackie way, which if you've watched this channel long enough, you know that this is not necessarily the right way. We get into things on this channel. <laughs> So I went ahead and cut out the comic strips. Sometimes I left them bigger, other times I just cut a panel at a time. We want a good variety of sizes. 
Now I feel like technically you can use glue, but the reason I'm going to use Mod Podge is because we're going to use resin. And some of the best way to seal paper is to use Mod Podge. Again, not sponsored by these guys. And for those of you who've never used this before, it's basically a sealant, but it will not get your paper wet. I don't know how they do it, but to me it's magic. So we're gonna use their brush. This is a very soft one. And I want some of this to go to the edge, so I'm going to do that. So let's get the canvas a little wet up here with the Mod Podge. This is always so nerve-wracking. Let's get the, the edges very nicely. Because the last thing we want is for our paper to actually lift. Okay, here we go. Very nice. Very sticky. Like a so. I don't think I put enough. <laughs> okay, here. Very nice and sticky, sticky. And I think I want this. Let's see. Let's get the edge. And no, that's too low. Here, there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna press it down. And I feel like this might come off, so I'm gonna cut a little slit over here. There. And bend it down. Yes! Oh my god, yes, that looks good! Okay, I'm gonna cut off the excess and we'll continue doing this here. Like a so. There. And I'll just bend that in here. Yes. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. If I can make a recommendation is not to overlap as many pieces as possible. Otherwise, we might have too many issues with the resin kind of be like, I'm a sneak in here. Just gonna go into little crevasses and things. So just try to get the edges where you want them and just be generous with your Mod Podge and make sure that you put it not just under the piece, but also on top. And I'm gonna be sure to put at least, I would say two to three coats on top so that we have a nice, good seal. So here they are all done. Now what we have to do is let them sit for at least a few hours before we do the next step. I can confirm that using Mod Podge will give you crusty fingers if you're not careful. And trust me, they're not cheese stuffed crust. It's not delicious. It's not, it's not an aesthetic. So for this next part, I went ahead and printed the silhouettes of the Pokemon I wanted. I figured I would take one of each color that would kind of be cool for a background. And basically all I'm doing is taking my X-Acto and cutting the silhouette out. And as you can see, I took Bulbasaur, Pikachu, Squirtle, Charmander, Litten, because I love Litten, and Gengar. Let me know in the comment section below which are your three top favorite Pokemon. And if you're not into Pokemon, Digimon. And if you're not into Digimon, animals. Include everybody. The next day. And here we are the next day and holy carp, holy shrimp, and ermigird. Look how gorgeous and shiny these pieces look. I am absolutely in love. I know some of you are going to say, but Jakey Joans gave you a very Halloween-y themed challenge. I know, I know, but I hope that Joanne understands that I cannot follow authority. <laughs> And I mean, this is the kind of relationship we're just going to have to build. I am a rebel without a cause. And I just wasn't feeling particularly spooky today. And my friend Ace of Clay did recommend that maybe I could have done a character popping out of the canvas in the same way that Steve Casino does. But I was feeling pretty geeky. I mean, nerdy crafter. He just nerdy crafter is not just a name, you know? <laughs> But yeah, I have to say, look how pretty these are. Now, the next step is something I'm really nervous about because we're going to be, I thought I missed, <laughs> we're going to be using light modeling paste. And basically, it's kind of like a clay, but mushier. And I can't think of a way to integrate this in my current project, but let me think on it a little bit. We still have another part of the project that I really want to try. So we're going to go ahead and use the palette knives that came in here because I want to spread a nice thick layer. I'm really nervous about this part, so... Okay, here's our first canvas that we're going to use. Since I want to do Pikachu first, we can do it this way, like so. And the good thing about this modeling paste is that it can be colored with acrylic paints. So I think I'm going to give it a light color and then a darker version of that color as the outline kind of thing. Bear with me here. Makes sense in my head. Let's put this aside. And I've never mixed this with color, so bear with me here. And we're going to use the acrylic paints that came also in this box. We need a Pikachu yellow. I hope these are thick. I like me some thick paints. All right, I feel like Pikachu is probably a medium yellow. So let's pierce that stuff like so. And let's see how thick it is. It's probably gonna be a little, oh, okay. So it's a little thick, but it will have a tendency to slightly, slowly flatten down, I believe. 
Oh, maybe I'm wrong. So we can see that the peak that we made is already slowly starting to flatten. So I'm not going to use this for texture. Luckily, we have the modeling paste. I'm going to put this aside so you grains can see after time how flat it gets. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to choose this canvas because we have a clearer view of Pikachu. We won't have that privilege on every single one of them, but I'm just going to do a little bit of tape on the edge here and a little bit at the bottom. By the way, the part that has the inner part of the silhouette is a little taped, so I will just go in manually after and fix that part. So let's put a little, oh my god, Pikachu, please. So we want it as flat as possible and there. Mm, no, let me fix that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and use the modeling paste. I had to get a new one because the last time I used it was a long time ago and it was missing to say the least. And it basically has the feeling of being kind of like whipped cream. It's just fluffy and very airy and light. So your paintings don't get weighed down. I have no idea how much I need. I'll take this much. All right, I know this is a white surface and a white color, but bear with me here. And let's add some Pikachu yellow, like so. And we're going to mix it. So I don't want it to be too... Oh, that is very yellow. <laughs> well, about that. All right, so we're going to have a nice rich type of yellow but look at that look how nice this is you could just keep the shape of things well i mean this is too thin but look at that if you want peaks it'll give you peaks and that's exactly what we're gonna go for there we go that is nice all right so here we go what i'm gonna try to do is i'm gonna start by the edges and work my way inwards just so that we have no risk of contamination i'm hoping <laughs> <laughs> to push it outwards kind of like so. Oh my god, this is nerve-wracking. Oh, rotation. Scoop and splotch. Scoop and splotch. The old scoop and splotch. That's how you get them. <laughs> So I'm not being extra careful when it comes to the texture itself. I just want to make sure that I'm blocking out the shape. I think that's what I'm doing. If we're going to succeed, that's a whole other debate. And if your grains know of a better technique, I am very open to learning. I am teachable. Very teachable. Is this thing lifting? Oh no. Oh no, that is lifting. Okay, let's not touch it. I think it does not like getting wet with the paste. Oh no. Oh no, tail. Do not move. Oh no. Okay, let's get the center. All right, so I genuinely have no idea if this has worked or is working so let's just remove it and see oh 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 Oh, hang on and oh okay there's a little bit of extra spillage here but other than that oh my god i like that we're gonna make the definition of the tail while it's wet let's try it all right let's just clean this part up with a q-tip like so so far so good and for the tail if i'm not mistaken is over here so let's i don't know how i'm gonna remove that i think we're kind of doomed with that <laughs> I think we're kind of doomed. We know it's Pikachu, right? Note to self, separations are not going to happen unless they're much thicker. So we're going to just cover that and keep it as it is. And there we go. I really like this. It doesn't look like much, but wait, the devil's in the details. And so I went ahead and repeated the exact same process to do for all of the other Pokemon. So I haven't let them fully dry. I let them sit for about two hours. What I want to do is add dimension. So I'm going to put the reverse cutout that we did, basically the outline. So the outside is dry to the gentle touch, like so. And I mixed up these two colors in my trusty airbrush. Oh, I love you so much airbrush you've been there for me for painting sculptures and all sorts of customizations and i'm basically going to attempt to make an outline on the comic book part okay here we go i'm trying not to press too hard and yes oh that is that is really light so it kind of looks a little dirty not sure how i feel about that i think i want it darker and so here is the before and after of them with the outline versus without the outline at first i was a little worried i'm like oh my god what did i do I'm looking forward to winter. And now what I really want to do is add some glitters. Obviously, we're not going to overdo it. It's going to be maybe a maximum of five scattered a little bit of everywhere and some gold flakes on each one. So we're going to use the exact same method. I know at the beginning I said I wanted to use resin, but that is not necessary. This Mod Podge did such a beautiful job getting this glossy type look. So I'm going to put a nice 
thick layer, add the glitter, and then the gold flakes. This is going to give us a sense of cohesion with, with each other. And I'm going to let it dry for a few hours. They look so cute. And as you saw, I'm taking apart the little canvases because I, I, I don't generally use the tiny canvases unless you grains send them to me with your art. And I'm removing them so that we can make a backing for these pieces so that they look like one big piece. It's really looking so fancy and I can't wait to put it up in our house. And here they are as one canvas set. Again, I didn't do anything spooky. I'm not feeling the spookiness for now, but I'm really happy with the result. Let me know what you think down below. If you want to watch more crafting videos, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch me unboxing surprise boxes that... I don't know why I do this, because you greens put the peer pressure on me. Make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you greens in the next video.